Okay, welcome back. Now come to example three. This is going to be a dice problem. It says you roll two dice five times and get the following results. Four, eight, ten, seven, five. What is the change in entropy from the first to the second roll, delta S1? From the second to the third roll, delta S2. From the third to the fourth, delta S3. From the fourth to the fifth, delta S4. And then the total change in entropy of the universe as a result of these rolls of dice, right? So then entropy of state one, this uh, KLN of W, right? Remember when we did this in the theory section, right? What was that? Well, for uh, four, there were three ways of getting four. So it was, uh, we can call this S4. So that was K L N of three, right? Eight, how many ways of getting eight were there? Well, eight was similar to six, right? So S6. So there were five ways of getting, <clears throat> there were uh, five ways of getting uh, six. So the entropy of the eight microstate the entropy of the eight macro state was k ln of five, right? How about 10? 10 was similar to what? It was similar to four, right? And then the entropy of that was k ln of three, right? And then uh, entropy of macro state seven, that was the highest one. It was six ways of getting seven. And then uh, entropy of state five, that was uh, K ln of four, okay? So then delta S one, two, let's call this delta S one to two. In other words, from the first roll to the uh, second roll, or we can even call it from four to eight. Delta S four to eight, right? So then what is that? Well, it's the entropy of state, the uh, macro state uh, eight, K ln of five minus K ln of three. So it's gonna be K ln of five thirds, delta S uh, four to eight, right? K ln of five thirds. So from here to here, the entropy of the universe increased because the uncertainty increased, right? So then uh, that's the first one. Delta S eight to 10, from here to here, what happened? So then it was gonna be K ln of three, minus k ln of five. So it's gonna be k ln of three fifths. So actually the entropy of the universe decreased, right? So it's gonna be basically negative k ln of five thirds, right? So the entropy of the universe decreased by the same amount that increased when it went from four to eight, right? Remember, eight was similar to six, right? The entropy of eight is similar to six. So when you, went, when you go from four to six, six back to four, the entropy of the universe doesn't change. So to go from four to eight, eight to 10, this same thing happens. The entropy of the universe decreases from here to here, the same amount that it increases from four to eight, right? So the, it's negative eight K ln of five thirds. This is gonna cancel that perfectly, okay? So we can call that delta S two, okay? How about delta S 10 to seven? Okay, so then that's gonna be the entropy of seven which is gonna be KLN of six minus the entropy of the 10, which is KLN of uh, three, All right? So then it's gonna be KLN of two. So that's a big increase in entropy from 10 to seven. But you see seven is the most likely state, so it has a very high entropy, we expect that. It's gonna be KLN for five, the entropy is KLN of four. For seven, the entropy is KLN of six, right? So then it's gonna be delta S from seven to five is gonna be KLN of four sixths, or I can write it as negative KLN of six fourths. So delta S seven to five, negative KLN of six fourths, which is uh, one and a half, right? Or three over two. All right. So then you can see then the net change in entropy is what? We had uh, four changes of entropy, K L N of five thirds. That one perfectly canceled negative K L N of five thirds, right? And then uh, K L N of two, right? And then this is negative K L N of 1.5. So what's the total change in entropy of the universe? Delta S total. 
Well, since these two cancel each other, you have just this one left, k ln of 2, okay, minus k ln of 1.5. Okay? So then that's going to be what? Which means this is positive. So that means the net change in entropy of the universe is going to be 4 thirds, uh, k ln of 4 thirds, so it's going to be positive. So is this a likely scenario for you to roll two dice and to get re these results? 4, 8, 10, 7, 5? Yes, this is more likely there to result than if, if I were to get a negative change in entropy, okay? It could happen, but the negative change in entropy is less likely, okay? Now, the more ch you roll, the more likely it is that uh, you're going to get a uh, positive change in entropy. If you only roll the dice five times, you could end up getting a combination of numbers where you get change in entropy is negative. That could happen because you've only rolled it five. But what if you roll it 10 times? What if you roll it 20 times? What if you roll it 100 times? What if you roll it a billion times, right? Well, if you roll it a lot of times, very, le very little likelihood, very little likelihood that the total change in entropy of the universe will be negative. The more you roll, the more you're increasing the likelihood that delta S total is going to be positive, right? It's also true that the more dice you roll, the more likely that delta S to be positive, right? So in other words, instead of rolling two dice five times, what if I roll n pairs of dice? n pairs of dice, right? So instead of two of them, there's one pair of dice, right? I do n pairs of dice. So then I increase the likelihood of getting a, a positive entropy, right? Each time I multiply this by n, so this is going to be uh, nk ln of 5 thirds. This is going to be negative nk ln of 5 thirds. This is going to be nk ln of 2. This is going to be nk ln 4 thirds, right? So if, imagine I roll Avogadro's number of pairs of dice. This is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Then I roll that. So what is the change in entropy going to be? Very, very little likelihood that it's going to be negative, right? Imagine Avogadro's number of pair of dice. So the change in entropy of Avogadro's number of pair of dice is going to be what? Nk ln of 5 thirds, right? Instead of k ln of 5 thirds, it's nk ln of 5 thirds. So Avogadro's number is going to be uh, Na, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, times k is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23rd, ln of 5 thirds. So Avogadro's constant multiplied by Boltzmann's constant gives you the gas constant, R. R ln of 5 thirds. So it's 8.314 ln of 5 thirds. What does that one come out? So imagine if you rolled N uh, Avogadro's number of um, Avogadro's number of pair of dice five times, what's the likelihood that the change in entropy will be negative 4.25 joules per Kelvin? The opposite of that, negative 4.25. No way, that is very, very unlikely. It's just as unlikely as when I mixed, the, in the previous example, when I mixed the 50 degrees of water with ice and the two met and the change in entropy was something like seven or eight joules per Kelvin. And then I said, what if I separate the water and make it into um, uh, make it back into water at 50, and then I freeze the ice back down to zero degrees, right? What's the change in entropy? It would have been negative something, like a whole number. Well, negative 4.25 joule per Kelvin change in entropy is very highly, almost impossible. But if you roll Avogadro's number of pair of dice five times, there's no way that you will, you're gonna get negative. But if you only do one pair of dice five times, it is likely that you might get negative change in entropy because the n value will be very small and k is negative 10 to the 23rd. So it's possible to get negative, very small change in entropy, but not negative whole number, like one, two, three, four, okay? So with this example, you see the concept of entropy applied to macroscopic uh, probabilities for two dice, for an n number of dice, and you can kind of get an idea of how to do these problems and why certain results are a lot more likely than other results, okay? Thank you very much.